Today's topic is 3.7, multiplying fractions. We're going to learn how to multiply fractions and how to reduce fractions by using a shortcut called the cancellation method. There's some key words for this lesson. Cancellation is where we're going to use a method where we cross cancel by factors that exist for both numbers. And then like fractions are fractions that have the same denominator, for example, 1 fourth and 3 fourths. When we do adding and subtracting fractions, we need the fractions to be like fractions. But for multiplying and dividing fractions, the fractions can be unlike. They can have different denominators. In this lesson, we'll learn about the cancellation method. And what that does is it saves us time by dividing smaller numbers. Whether you choose to use the cancellation method or you choose to reduce your fractions in the end, you always need to take the time to check that your final answer is in lowest terms. So there's four steps to multiplying any combination of fractions. So you can multiply proper fractions, you can multiply mixed numbers or even whole numbers. Step one is to make sure that we change all whole numbers and mixed numbers to a fraction form. So that would change them to an improper fraction. Step two, we're going to reduce using cancellation. We're going to divide out common factors. Step three, we will multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. And then step four, we'll make sure our answer is in lowest terms and fully simplified. If we have an improper fraction, we're going to change that to a mixed number. Or if it divides evenly, it will become a whole number. So I'll show a couple examples. The first one's the same as in your book. So let's say we take 4 sixths and we multiply that by 3 fifths. What we can do is start to look for cancellation. Because these fractions are already proper fractions, there's nothing to change here. But when we look across, we have 4 and 5. We see that we can't divide 4 and 5 by the same number. So we're going to leave those two alone. But on the other side, we have six and three, and we can cross cancel or reduce those numbers by dividing by three. So I'm going to divide three by three, which gives me one, and six divided by three. It's very important that you divide by the same number. So six divided by three is two. So now I've cross canceled. Now I can follow step three. I'm going to multiply my numerator times numerator. 4 times 1 is 4. And multiply my denominator by denominator. 2 times 5 is 10. Now sometimes this happens where the final answer, af even after cross-reducing, is not yet in lowest terms. So we're going to have to simplify this further by dividing by 2. And it's just a coincidence that this happens. Usually when you cross reduce or cross cancel, your answer is already in lowest terms. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we end up with a final answer of 2 fifths after we've reduced this fraction down. A second example that isn't in your book would be where we would maybe start with a mixed number. So let's say 2 and a half times 3 quarters. If you are faced with a mixed number times a proper fraction, you first have to change this mixed number to an improper fraction using the C method. So 2 times 2 plus 1 would be 5 over 2 times 3 over 4. And we look to cross reduce. 4 and 5, you cannot reduce those. And 2 and 3, you cannot either. So you're going to multiply across numerator times numerator. 5 times 3 is 15. Denominator times denominator, 2 times 4 is 8. Now, because the answer is improper, we need to change it back to a mixed number in lowest terms. 8 divides into 15 once, with 7 remaining over 8. We check that our answer is in lowest terms. It is. Our final answer here is 1 and 7 eighths. So for the do together, we're going to look to cross reduce or cross cancellation and multiplying numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. 
So we have 5 and 3, those cannot be cancelled, but 6 and 2 can. We can divide by 2 equals 1, and 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Now we can multiply. 5 times 1 for the numerator is 5, and for the denominator, 3 times 3 is 9. Our answer is in lowest terms, it is 5 ninths. For number 2, we look across, we have 3 and 15. Both are divisible by 3, so we're going to divide them both by 3. And you don't have to show the division, you can do that just by cross cancelling. Either way, you're going to get 1 and 5. And the other way, 6 and 9 are both divisible by 3 as well. So we're going to cross cancel them. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And now we can go ahead and multiply. 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 times 5 is 15. So our answer here is 2 fifteenths. For number 3, we look across. We're trying to cross cancel. 5 and 4, there's nothing to do there. 6 and 2 are both divisible by 2. And again, I'm showing division. You don't have to. You can simply cross out 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then we multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. 5 times 1 is 5, 3 times 4 is 12. So you need to be careful when you cross cancel or cross reduce that you're clearly showing your, yourself the new numbers for numerator and denominator. For number 4, we look across 6 and 24. Both are divisible by 6. So I'm going to cancel. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And on the other side, 7 and 21 are both divisible by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 21 divided by 7 is 3. Now we multiply. 1 times 3 for the numerator, and 1 times 4 for the denominator. The final answer here is 3 quarters. So we'll do a few select exercise questions together, and then you can complete the exercise on your own. For 3.7a number 1, we see we have the same denominators, but that's just coincidence. There's nothing to change there. We look to cross-reduce looking across, and there's nothing. 8 and 1 and 7 and 8, there's nothing to divide by. So 7 times 1 is 7. 8 times 8 is 64. For number 2, we look across 3 and 4, and 5 and 3, there's nothing to cross cancel. So we go ahead and multiply, numerator times numerator is 9, denominator times denominator is 20, and those answers are in lowest terms. So these first two questions were to show you that there's not always the ability to cross reduce. We look for it wherever we can, we simplify by cross cancelling. But if there's nothing more we can do, we multiply numerator and denominator. For question 7, we do have something to cross-reduce here, so we can cancel out by dividing by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 4 and 1, there's nothing to cross-cancel, so now we're ready to multiply. 1 times 1 is 1 for the numerator. 2 times 4 is 8 for the denominator. For number 8, we look across 5 and 4, we cannot cross cancel, but 4 and 12 we can. We can divide by 4 and divide by 4. That equals 1 and that equals 3. So when we multiply, 1 times 4 is 4, 5 times 3 is 15, we're all good. Now let's say that you made an error in what you divide by. That happens. It happens to us all. All will be well. Let's say that you take the 4 and the 12 and you just divide by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then you went ahead and multiplied 2 times 4 is 8, and 5 times 6 is 30. It's really important when you're done to check, is my answer in lowest terms? 8 over 30 is not in lowest terms because we can divide them both at least by 2. So there you would have to just go ahead and reduce, as we learned in a previous lesson. 
you would just reduce. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 30 divided by 2 is 15. We'll still come to the same result, and it happens sometimes that it takes us maybe one step to get to the lowest terms, maybe two, maybe three. It does depend on the numbers. Now we can do large chain multiplication when we have cross-reducing. Otherwise, multiplying 4 times 5 times 20 times 9 times 22, that's going to get us a huge number and it's going to be a lot of work. And the same goes with the denominator. And then we'd have to reduce that fraction. It could take us a really long time. So instead, we can cross-reduce. And the beautiful thing is, because you can multiply in any order, you can cross-reduce in any order. So the way you cross-reduce and the way I cross-reduce for a large chain might be different, but we should get to the same result. So what I'm going to do is look for numbers that I can cross-reduce. And I'm looking across, and for example, I can take 25 and 20, and I can cr cross-reduce them. So I can divide by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. But I can go way over here to 11 and way over here to 22, and I can cross-reduce those two numbers. So 11 divided by 11 is 1, and 22 divided by 11 is 2. Same goes the other way. I can take 4 and 12. I can divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And now I can take 3 and 9. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And I keep going until I can't find any more that are matching. So I've got 4 and 6, or 4 and 8. I'm going to divide 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then I have a 6 and a 2. So I can cross-reduce there. Divide by 2, divide by 2. And I keep going until I think that I've got it and I am prepared to reduce at the end. And every time I do this question, I do it a little bit differently. So now I have 1 times 5 times 1 times 3 times 1. Well, all those 1s don't matter, so it's really like 5 times 3, which is 15, right? Because multiplying by 1 doesn't change the number. And on my bottom, I have 1 times 5 times 1 times 3 times 2. So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. So you can see here that I didn't quite get it all. I can still reduce, and I actually can divide by 15 here. So I can divide by 15, getting me down to a final answer of 1 half. For number 29, we have a whole number multiplied by two fractions. What we need to do there is put that whole number over 1, making it into a fraction, and then we're able to cross-reduce. And that's helpful because we have 150. So we're going to divide by 50 and divide by 50. And then we're going to look for other ones that we can reduce by. And it doesn't look we, like we have anything else because we have a 21 and a 4. Oh, we do. We have a 2 and a 4 across from each other. So I can divide by 2 and divide by 2. So now I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to see that I have 21 times 3, which is 63, and 1 times 1 times 2 is 2, and now I can divide up. So I don't want to leave an improper fraction. Let me now divide 2 into 63. 2 goes into 6 3 times bring down my 3, 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over. So this is going to be 31 times with 1 remaining over 2. So my final answer for number 29 is 31 and a half. So now it's your turn to try the rest of the exercise questions for lesson 7.